You guys want a cold start? Are you tired of cold starts? Should we do a cold start? We should always do a cold start. What's up everyone? This is Scott with Team 512 and I'm back with another video. If this is your first time to the channel, a very warm welcome to you. And uh, thank you for spending some of your day with me. Now, what are we doing today? Well, tomorrow is Saturday, which means cars and coffee. And uh, the weather is supposed to be real nice here in Pennsylvania, but the uh, C7 is kind of dirty. I haven't cleaned it since Carlisle last week and I've dre I drove it a bunch this week and uh, it's just filthy. So what I figured I'd do is uh, show you guys exactly what I do uh, for a maintenance wash. Now this isn't a deep clean where I'm gonna remove the wheels and uh, you know some of the other stuff that you might do uh, for a deeper clean. This is just, I guess what I would call a maintenance wash and uh, we're just trying to get that surface dirt off of the car and uh, bring it back to a decent uh, shine. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is get the pressure washer. Now I've been using a Greenworks 2000 PSI pressure washer that I bought at um, I think Lowe's. It's electric and uh, boogie woogie woogie woogie. You guys want a cold start? Are you tired of cold starts? Should we do a cold start? We should always do a cold start. <laughs> See, wasn't that worth it? Now, the first thing I usually do before I start washing the car is I'll walk around the car and take a look at it and see where the worst areas of dirt um, and buildup of road grime are. And if you have any experience with Corvettes, which you probably do because you're watching this channel, you guys know the back end of the Corvette gets pretty dirty. So this is an area that we typically always have to address. Um, but we look at the wheels. I still have the original brake pads on here. You guys know that these brake pads are notorious for brake dust. Ready? Check this out. <laughs> That's after one week of driving. Also, front of the car, typical bug guts. Um, also, right here, you can see on the mirrors, we got some good bug guts going on there. We got some bug juice going on here. The windows are filthy. So let's go ahead and get a couple buckets and I'll take you for a little tour over here of my shelf. Um, I have a load of towels in the washer now, but these are microfiber towels. These are, these are the ones I usually use to wash the car and also to wipe down the wheels in the interior. I have some of these super soft edgeless towels from the rag company. They are awesome. I've got some of these towels here from AutoZone that are really soft, They're actually good towels. But you can see the, tick, the ticking, ticking? Is this called ticking? Whatever this stuff on the edge is uh, falling off, turning them into edgeless towels. So, um, but this is usually what I use to uh, wipe down the car and apply the uh, CarPro Reload. Um, these are the really, really nasty towels, the ones that I won't even touch the paint with. And, um, Here's, uh, here's my luggable Lou. So, uh, yeah, I mean it, if you gotta go, you gotta go. That'll be our rinse bucket. Then we have this bucket from Home Depot and it's full of some wash gear. We'll grab the luggable Lou. And the soap that I've been using lately is this Chemical Guys Honeydew. Um, it is pH neutral, it's good for ceramic coats, and um, it smells really good. So the first thing I do is I make sure that I fill up the reservoir for my foam cannon and try not to waste some down the side of it if we have enough out of here. Now I usually fill this up about eighth of the way full. I'll show you guys how much I use. I've done this enough times that I know how much it takes to to do my car and get good foam without using too much. It smells so good I kind of want to lick it. It actually looks like the uh, liquid form of kryptonite. About that full. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 
this and pour just a little bit in the bottom of the bucket. I'm gonna lick that off too. All right, so the next thing you wanna do, or I wanna do, is I wanna start filling up this bucket with some fresh water and filling up the reservoir for the foam cannon. The trick to this is to add water without prematurely foaming up the car wash solution. Very gentle. We insert the tube. Now, what's cool about this is it's all ready to go and we'll just set it aside until we need it. We'll fill that bucket uh, almost halfway full. Now, I decided to forego the luggable loo. There is an unidentified substance in the bottom of that luggable loo and uh, I just don't feel comfortable using it as a rinse bucket today. So we're gonna do the single bucket method. I know, I know, some of you were triggered. How could you do the single bucket method on a car like this? I get it, trust me, it's gonna be okay. Now, look how nice that stuff foams up. That honeydew is really, really good soap. Look at that. It's tacky, it hangs on you. All right, so now we've got everything prepped and ready to start washing. The next thing I usually do is I take some of this Black Magic No Scrubs All Wheel Cleaner and hit these wheels up with this first. Next step is to just soak the car, get it wet, and then we're going to hit it with some foam. Alright, let me just show you the beading. That's from the Car Pro Reload and the ceramic coat on the car. It just beads up on here. And if I drove 100 miles an hour, it would probably all just fly off. I mean, it's pretty remarkable how well this, this uh, Car Pro Reload um, beads up this paint. Look at this. The reason I like using, again, this honeydew foam is because I let the foam do the work. So there's very little uh, rubbing uh, and contact with the actual rag. So. Uh, Let's get started foaming the car up. So we use the foam because it grips onto the dirt and pulls it off the car, but we still need to use a wash mitt or some kind of a soft microfiber rag, and uh, that's what we're going to do now. So I went and washed the whole car. The only thing left to do is take care of these filthy wheels. I know there's an order of operations here. Typically, you do your wheels first, and then you do the rest of the car. I'm not a detailer. I enjoy taking care of my cars. I understand that there's a preferred way or a best practice, um, and I try to do it the best I can, but it doesn't always happen. So I'm doing it my way, so don't get too triggered. If you'd like to come over and help me wash my car sometime and show me the best way to do it, I'd be more than happy to let you do that, as long as you're not a psycho. I have like a no psycho rule in my life. So I've always struggled with the best way to get a car dry after I wash it without using some kind of a towel or a chamois. Well, here's my secret weapon. Try this baby. 
put the choke on, give her some throttle. Starts every time. One question you might have is what do you do after you're done uh, blow drying the car with the leaf blower <clears throat> and by the way I spared you guys the whole entire drying process because it takes a good 20 <clears throat> 20 minutes to get uh, the majority of the water off but what do we do in situations like the door jam where we still have some water and we can't necessarily get it off with the leaf blower or there's some excess drips I would recommend is use an edgeless microfiber towel and get it lubricated with either a spray sealant or a spray wax of your choice but don't just rub a dry towel onto your car the lubrication is the most important thing here here's what a maintenance wash looks like pretty good result i'm going to go through and make sure that uh, all of the wet spots are taken care of wipe it down vacuum the inside put some tire shine on the tires and uh, we'll be good for today and uh, tomorrow we'll be at cars and coffee